Hiya, I'm Brave Dave. I'm a mountain guide who leads people on adventures and I also make the occasional YouTube video. A few days ago I posted a video clip of me leading someone up a really cool scramble. It was a quick clip to bring attention to the fact that I offer tougher adventures as well as the standard ones for competent people who want to push themselves a bit further. I posted it, didn't think much of it, whatever. Well, that turned into a little bit of a shit show, didn't it? Someone took a dislike to it, posted it on a climbing forum, and then the hordes descended. Suddenly, there were loads of angry people, loads of name calling, a lot of people making presumptions about things which weren't true, and whereas obviously there are some things wrong with the video, which I fully admit, it was a bit of a mess. I've been around long enough to know that trying to communicate things in YouTube comments is a completely futile exercise, so I thought I'd make a video instead. Okay, first of all, the offending video. This is it, okay, so basically I'm leading a client up a steep scramble, everything looks very dramatic, there's sharp rocks everywhere, there's tongue in cheek comments about how scary it is, everyone's cool and calm, and the video is like three minutes long. That's it. Well, people were not happy. The video got linked on a climbing forum and people were criticizing all sorts of things. Some valid, I fully admit that, but a lot of them were just jumping into the internet anger machine and going off on one, even about things that weren't even true. Some people had genuine concerns, which is great, but some people just love a bit of internet drama and getting to call people names online makes their day, which isn't so great. And one old guy felt the need to keep telling me that if he saw me out on the mountains, he would actually kill me. Okay? So, nothing overly dramatic there. All compass mentus. The biggest mistake I made with posting this video is that I forgot the golden rule. If you don't give any context, then people will presume whatever they want to presume and get very angry, even if it's not completely true. Like I said, I posted the clip on a bit of a whim, didn't think too much about it. Most of my subscribers don't care about mountain stuff anyway. In hindsight, I should have probably paused and thought about what the video actually looks like without any context. Probably not a mistake I'll make again. So here's some context to the video. Okay, after having done a load of scrambling around Crib Goch, my client and I had finished what we set out to do and she'd been so fast, by that point it was barely even midday. Now, I'm not the sort of mountain leader who just clocks off early if a client is faster than expected. All Brave Dave guided adventure clients go home, tired and aching, thinking about what a fantastic full day they've had. So whilst coming down off Goch, we were thinking what to do, and we ended up bouncing the idea around of going up this gully. My client had seen my original video from a year ago and wanted something exciting, and to be honest, I had wanted to do the route again and recce it with leading people in mind. So after a lot of contemplating what it would involve, we decided, okay, let's do it. I was extremely cautious about going ahead with this. I made sure that my client understood the sorts of things we'd face up there, and we agreed that at any point that she wasn't comfortable, we'd turn around and find a way down. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay, there's more water than there was last time, which means more slippery rocks. There's also plenty of dry rocks. So nothing to worry about. We are entering the gully. So it was a recce where both parties knew exactly what kind of risks were involved, but it was a hot, dry day, ideal for scrambling, with no pressure to reach the top, and we were both up for doing it. Since then, I've been up there a load of times, worked out the best route for each of the many sections and obstacles. I found lots of escape routes along the way, just in case. That's why I put this video up, to just put it out there that this is an option for anyone who wants to try something a bit tougher. So that's the context behind the offending video. Now, here are the criticisms, both fair and the not so fair, in no particular order. Again, I know that a lot of people are very qualified and have tons of experience, and I fully respect that, but that doesn't make them immune from presuming things which aren't true based on a short video clip. Also, I just wanted to point out that this video is directed at anyone watching it, not specifically my critics. So when I explain simple things, I'm not being patronising to anyone who already knows it. Please bear that in mind, because I already know someone will spin it into Brave Dave's talking to us like we're children and he thinks he knows more than everyone in the world about everything. So I'm just preempting that now by saying that. Thanks. The climb is far too dangerous. 
Some people pointed out that this is a grade two scramble. Okay, so the scramble in this video is part of a huge ascent, which overall is set as a grade two. Obviously, that doesn't mean that the whole thing is grade two, but parts of it are. For those of you who don't know, scrambles are given a grade one to four. So you've got grade one, easy peasy. Grade two, more of a gray area. Grade three, grade four, yeah, you're pretty much rock climbing by that point. So obviously ropes are essential. Grade two means a climb is more exposed and a rope could be used. So if someone isn't very confident, then it would be advisable to give them some sort of protection, like a rope or something, to make them feel safer. However, if someone is confident and comfortable with a climb in front of them, and it's not a very long climb, then you can probably just let them get on with it. I'd spent about five hours with my client that day already, scrambling on various mountains. As a mountain leader, you're constantly assessing your client's abilities to adjust and tailor the route for them. I knew my client could get up there no problem, I went up first, she saw how easy it was and that there were plenty of holes, and up she went. The climb is also not as steep as it looks in this video. If you hadn't done that climb before, then I appreciate that it does look pretty mental, which is why I say so in the video. A wide angle lens will make something quite steep look completely sheer. Okay, so here's Crib Goch from a wide angle lens. It looks like both sides are absolutely sheer, but here it is from a normal lens, and as you can see, Yes, it's steep, but it's not as ridiculously crazy as it looks from the other point of view. Funnily enough, I'd say that this was actually one of the easier parts of the whole ascent. It just looks dramatic because of the settings, which is why I was filming it. The climb in the video is technically very easy as there are numerous handholds and footholds, and when it's dry, as it was, anyone who's fine with heights would be able to do it. Some of the rocks were loose, yes, but that's not a big problem. You just make sure everyone is aware of this and knows to test each rock before they commit to it. If you pull on a rock and it moves, then find another one. Simple as that. A competent scrambler will already be aware of this. Like I said already, I'd already assessed my client to know that she was more than capable of doing all the scrambles involved in the ascent of this gully. She knew how to climb, she was absolutely fine with heights, and the conditions were perfect. So in conclusion, risk and danger is subjective. Short grade two scrambles are a gray area where rope protection could be applied if a client was nervous. I'm sure there are lots of people out there who wouldn't dare climb that, but this climb was not too dangerous for either myself or my client, and my client agrees. And I'd never lead anyone up there unless I knew for a fact that they were capable of comfortably managing the whole thing. So those are my rational reasons why I thought that the climb wasn't too dangerous in those circumstances. I'm not saying I'm definitely right and everybody else is wrong. I'm just saying that's why I thought it was okay and that's why I did it. You should be wearing helmets. Absolutely, I agree with this. There were several parts of the entire ascent where it was steep enough for rocks to be knocked loose onto a person below. When this was the case, we were very aware of it. So whoever was higher up was extra careful about knocking anything loose until the other person had caught up. We didn't have helmets here because it was an impromptu climb and I hadn't brought one. But when I lead people up from now on though, anywhere with steep ground, not necessarily this one, helmets all around. Safety first. On the section shown in this video, the chances of a rock hitting someone were kept to a minimum because I deliberately didn't climb directly above her. If you're climbing with someone, then you keep at a diagonal to them so that if you kick a rock loose, it falls past them, not onto them. That's just the polite thing to do. So this guy says that I was climbing directly above my client, which puts her at risk from falling rocks. No, I didn't, and I really didn't. Throughout the entire video, I am never directly above her. This is one of those accusations that I was talking about earlier, which isn't at all true. For those watching, she is genuinely scared. Again, no, she's not. She's really not. In fact, she took personal offense at that. My client was cautious, as anyone should be, but if she'd been scared, then she'd have told me and I'd have gone down to help her out. By this point, we'd been scrambling for hours, so I knew what she could comfortably do, and she knew that if she wasn't sure about something, then she'd tell me. That's why I'm not shadowing her or telling her every single little move she should make. I don't want to patronize my clients. I know that she's capable and isn't having any trouble, so all I need to do at that point is keep climbing up and show her the way. Some people said, I'm not leading anyone in this video. Well, 
I disagree with that because actually I am leading. Like I already said, I've been leading her all day. Sometimes I'd be completely involved in helping her up and over a certain part, and other times I'd watch from a few meters above because I knew she was doing fine without any help. Yes. Got it. Go on then. Thanks. That's what I'm there for. It's a guide's job. All right. This is drier up here. Need a hand, just say. This is not a lot of good. Oh, that's nice. No, that's yeah. Okay, I think, yeah. Springy little sapling <laughs> saves the day. Right, so this bit feels doable because there's loads of hand grips, but at the same time, it's overhanging, and yeah. I'm thinking about how you're going to get up. Oh yeah. We're going that way. Well, I am, but you won't. <laughs> Don't you follow me here? Bloody horrible rock. That's it. Okay. Right, so I'm glad I tested that out and you're definitely not leading up there. Okay, into the sunshine where it's dry. How are you feeling? Yeah, good actually. Good. Because you know that there is this option. Yeah. That makes all the difference. And I wouldn't be going any further if there wasn't. So I disagree with people saying I'm not leading because I really was. Right, in the video, I find a rock which is completely loose and I can just slide out the ground and I then drop it down the slope. Okay, I admit I made a mistake here. Okay, first of all, the unwritten rule is that you never drop a rock off a cliff. Simple as that. I did drop a rock off because I wanted to give the camera an idea of how steep it was, but obviously there was no one below me and I knew for sure that the rock wasn't going to catapult off somewhere that I couldn't see. Now, I know some people will say, you can never know for sure, but you can sometimes. The rock wasn't going anywhere other than the bottom of the rock face because the ground evens out down there and there was nothing nearby. If there was any chance of the rock bouncing somewhere out of view, then I obviously wouldn't have done it. So in summary, you should never drop a rock off a cliff, even if you know it's not gonna be a danger to anyone, you just don't do it and I apologize for showing that in the video and I shouldn't have done it. Sincerely apologize for that. Another thing I want to address is this whole armchair expert thing and random internet user. As again, it's obvious people have taken it the wrong way and run wild with it. Okay, in some comment which I can't find now, I referred to the person as an armchair expert. This was because he'd made a presumption about something which wasn't true. When I called him an armchair expert, it didn't mean that I thought the person making the comment had absolutely no experience or authority. It meant that they are declaring something to be true, which I knew to not be true due to having actually been there when it happened. So some guy said something, I used the phrase armchair expert, and people took that to mean that I was saying, I'm Brave Dave and I know everything and you don't know anything and you don't have any qualifications or experience and I'm the greatest mountain leader of all time, which obviously wasn't the case. And then someone was like, do you know who you're talking to? John Smith has 30 years of experience and lives on a mountain and invented rope. Have you no respect? And I was like, I don't know anything about anyone in these comments other than their username and the comment they've made. From my point of view, everyone's just a random YouTube commenter. Obviously, I'm meaning that whatever someone's experience or authority is, how am I supposed to know if all I've got to go on is a YouTube name and a, a comment that makes a false presumption? Like, I don't magically just know anything about people who comment on YouTube. That's all I meant by that. Okay, here are a couple of other comments. This guy, JR, he's one of the very reasonable ones. Like, he sounds like a nice guy. I'd just like to say that the piss tape responses I gave were generally due to someone making a false presumption about something or to the people insisting that I should know who someone else is. It's not that I want to ignore everything anyone says to me, it's more that what they were saying didn't seem to make sense. Disclaimer, because this is the internet, I'm not saying everything that everyone said didn't make sense, just some of it. I'm also very, very aware that I'm not invincible and that neither is my client. And that's why whenever there was a dodgy section, we were extra careful. And when I leave people, I want everyone to get home safely afterwards and be buzzing from the exciting day they've had. That is my top priority. Rise and Summit, again, another very reasonable comment, which I appreciate. 
though there is an example here of what I was saying just now about how I refer to someone as a random YouTube commenter and people have taken it to mean I'm insulting them. Whereas actually I meant it literally because I don't know who any of these people are. They are therefore random people commenting on YouTube. But yeah, a very good comment. I've got my mountain leader, I've got insurance, but I honestly didn't think that I was out of my remit with leading someone up there. It's a tougher scramble than most, but still a scramble. There were pockets of grade two scrambles in there, which as I pointed out earlier, means that a rope can be advisable depending on the situation, but it's not compulsory. And every part is perfectly manageable without a rope. So on that day, I honestly didn't think that I was doing anything wrong. But thank you Ryzen Summit for that comment. Earth Titan, well that looks sketchy, where's the rest of the video, I want to see the top. No problem my friend, here it is. Wow. Well done, I'm glad you like that, yeah. knew you would. So that's the bulk of the comments answered, I'm sure that my explanations haven't satisfied all of the bloodlust, but I hope that some of the more reasonable critics can see that I wasn't just blindly heading off to death and doom. Like I said just now, I thought that a route which has small sections of grade two scrambles is not a problem to do without a rope, provided the conditions are great and the client is more than capable, and I meant absolutely no harm by doing it and putting up a video about it. So thank you for watching this video. To the concerned rock climbing experts, Thank you for your feedback, and I hope that you can see that I wasn't trying to insult anyone. To the psychopath who kept threatening to kill me, get your head checked, mate. And to the beginners out there looking for an adventure, if you think you'd quite enjoy me having me lead you around the mountains, and we'll only do grade one max, then get in touch with me and let's arrange a Brave Dave guided adventure. Be a lot of fun. All right, guys, thanks a lot. See ya.